but that cool. And we're going to start working on our video system. Our control system is done. Uh, all I'm going to do is put a zip tie around these three things once I'm sure that the motor's going in the right direction. It's ready to rock. Now we've got this little pigtail, little JST pigtail we put on there. And that's what's going to power our video system. So let's get that stuff out. Need a run cam. Need a receiver. And our antenna. And the power filter. And one other thing we need. Uh, one of these right angles. Oh, we need to remeasure the CG too. I almost forgot. You know what? I'll do that right now. It's 94 centimeters. No, 94 millimeters. 94 centimeters would be quite a ways in the front. Leading edge. Okay, and I'm just going to put these back in there. Make sure you didn't poke through the top when you do that. There we go. Yeah. Now we got our CG set again. Okay. All right. So, let's get our VTX. Screw our 90 degree on there. And I'm going to want it facing up because I'm going to embed it on the top of the wing like this. I won't be able to change channels. Your antenna on there. Good. And need the wiring harness out of there. Okay, I don't think we need anything else out of that box. Wires. Get rid of that. Let's get our camera. And the wires for that. this in here so we don't lose it. You know what? Yeah, that's fine. Just keep recording. Alright, so our power filter is going to plug into this JST. It's out. This is in. that and all our video 
power is going to come from that for our camera, for our VTX, so that we get a nice clean video. So I'm going to figure out where to mount this. Uh, I know where I'm going to mount the camera. It's going to go right here. The VTX is going to go like right here. Maybe like this. Yeah, like that. So, wires easily reach into this bay. Okay, so I'm probably going to have to shorten the wires on this, and I'm probably going to mount it. I'm just going to glue it right there, pretty much. So, yeah. Yeah, you know what? Let's just use a little Velcro. And we're just going to stick that on with Velcro, too. Right next to the ESC, uh, but not too close because we don't want interference. We need about half that much. Okay. Yeah. That looks good. All right. I got that stuck on this side. And stuck on the other side. So like that, and that's where we're going to mount that. I uh, probably will shorten up this wire, but for now, that's fine. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, this wire's coming out of that power filter. You can see where I mounted it. Just <laughs> dump my VTX. Just right here. Just right inside of that little winglet right there. Okay. So that, that's the power coming out of that filter. And we're just going to connect that to the VTX. We're going to connect that to the camera. And we're going to connect the VTX to the camera. And that's going to be it. So we need to cut another bay for this VTX. And this time we're going to cut it on the top. And I'm thinking we're going to put it like right there. So let me grab my pen. And just draw a, just draw a line here. Just out around the antenna connector. On that side, and just connect those two like that, and we're going to need a little extra for the wires. Okay, so how deep do we want to cut that? I'm going to cut it deep enough so that the antenna sits flush. So you know what else? What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to mark my knife. I wanted to use the snap blades for this because you can adjust the length, but they just the ones I bought just aren't working. So. Okay, and then my other thing was for the, um, I'm just going to mark my knife the depth I want to cut. Do you have a different oh, maybe I can't. Well, I managed to mark it, but it's not very well marked. I can see it. So I know how deep I want to cut. Okay, so let's just cut an outline there.
you're not sure how deep you should be cutting, you can always remember you can always cut more, <laughs> but you can't cut less. So if you err a little on the shallow side, it's not the end of the world. You can always add a bit more. Okay. So that's that. Just gonna peel the laminate off of that spot. If I can get a hold of it. There we go. You can see that's where I cut it and that's where this is gonna sit just like that. So we're gonna do the exact same thing we did before. I'm just gonna cut a grid in and pluck that foam out. Cutting foam, these blades get so dull so fast. This is probably like the last cut I'm gonna be able to make with this blade. You know, I'm about to change it out for a new one if I want to cut anything else. I'm not sure if we need to cut any more foam, but let's we'll see. If I do, I'm gonna need a new blade. Okay, I'm just gonna pluck that out just like we did before. Just like that. You see how easy that plucks out? Because I cut the grid and you just pluck a square out. Just work your way to the outside. And we're not going to laminate over the VTX because VTXs get hot. So we have to figure out some other way to put it in here. And I'll show you. What I've done with my other planes, and that probably is what we're going to do here today, too. Okay. See how that goes in there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now sometimes what I do is I put a piece of wood underneath of that and I zip tie that to the wood, but I think in this case I am not going to do that because I don't want to add any more weight to this very small plane, you know, and unbalance it. We've got control on this side, video on that side. So I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably just going to put some Velcro in there and just Velcro this down and then just use a little hot glue around the antenna to just hold that thing in there. And it's not going to go anywhere. And even if it does, it's not the end of the world. It's not It's not going to move in flight, that's for sure. In a hard crash, it might pop out, and I'll just put it back in. So I think that's what we're going to do. But first, 
we need to find a way to connect these wires. And actually, I didn't really cut enough to get the wires onto that plug. No, so I need to add just a little bit more, like here and right there, and just cut that out. that. There we go. Now we've got enough room for that plug. Okay. So we need to get the wires from here over into this battery bay where we're going to connect everything up. And we're going to use this again and we're just going to heat it up. Quick shot. Just steady the nerves. Heat it up. And we're just going to push it through there and just make a hole and we can then pass those wires through into this battery bay. So, let's do that. Once you've used one of these rods once, you'll see that they get foam on the end, and then you can tell when they're hot because they start to smoke. You see the smoke coming off of there. And we're just going to push it right through. Into, yep, just like that. Boom. We're just going to heat it up again and make that hole a little bigger. So that we can pass those wires through. When you're doing this, remember hot metal looks exactly like cold metal. So be careful. Just gonna make that hole a little bigger. Yeah. That should do it. Went right into the bottom of that battery tank. Perfect. So let's get the wires. We're gonna cut these ends off. We're going to pass them right through there. Yeah, it's going to Just going to twist them all up. Together. Like this. Then we're going to pass them right through that hole. Perfect. Right into the battery bay. So, you can see right there, they come right in. And that's exactly what we wanted. Okay, so we plug that VTX in. I really don't feel the need to really secure this VTX hardcore like I do with some of my other planes. This antenna is not going to catch a lot of wind. Is there anything I want to do with it? I don't want to cover it because it's going to get hot. Hmm. What can I do to really secure that? So I'm just going to use some hot glue. I'm just going to use some hot glue around the antenna connector. That part's not really going to get hot. Right at the top of the VTX. And that's going to hold that in there fine. That's going to hold that in there fine. I usually wouldn't use hot glue on a VTX because they get hot. But... That antenna connector is not going to get hot. Not hot enough to melt hot glue. It's going to be in the wind. It's going to be fine. If it doesn't work out, I'll find some other way to secure it. I'm just, uh, I don't feel like that's, that's going to be a problem. So, we'll see. We'll see on the maiden flight whether or not it, it stays in there. I think it will. I think it will. I don't think it's going to be an issue. So, we're going to let the hot glue gun get a little hot, squirt a little glue in there, and uh, that'll be that for securing that. We'll start cutting this camera out. I'm going to need some more hot glue for sure. Just about ready to shoot some glue. Yeah, there we go. Okay. The glue is going to stop this connector from loosening up. It's going to stop this antenna from loosening up. A little bit right in this neighborhood, too. 
There we go. That's all. A little bit more right around there. Yep, that's it. That's good. That's good. If I need to take that out, I can. If it turns out it doesn't work and I need to secure it better, I will. But that's good for now. So we're going to need this hot glue gun again in a minute. So I'm not going to let that get too far away. Okay. So, camera. Let's get that camera in here. So the camera you want... I'm going to take the lens cap off. This, by the way, is a 2.3 lens. I usually use a 2.5, but I couldn't get a mini with a 2.5. So I'm going to have to make do with a 2.3. So we're going to want to cut that in like right here. So you want it in far enough so that's protected, but not in so far that it's that it's you're going to see foam. It's hard to it's going to be hard to do. It's pretty much in the center right there. I'm just going to cut like that. Cut like that. Okay. I'm going to cut a pretty deep piece of foam out here to get that camera in. Okay. This should pop out. Almost. That's almost good enough. But I want to go a little deeper. That I feel like is pretty good. I feel like that's pretty good. So I'm just gonna what I just did there was just cut a little shelf into the front of the plane there. And the camera just fits right in there. And we're just gonna put some hot glue around the sides and the back and the bottom. And that's gonna be it. Now you don't want to, unlike a multi-rotor, you don't want to angle your camera up. You want it kind of level. Maybe even a little pointed down, but pretty much level is where you want to be. I'm going to take a little foam out of this corner because it doesn't sit quite straight. There we go. There we go. Okay, let me get that hot glue hot again. We'll secure that camera. Hot glue is cooking. All right, while we're doing that, we'll get some of these wires taken care of. So, definitely going to have to shorten this wire by quite a bit. Let me peel this off of here. So I don't want to get in there and start soldering this. I'm just going to take some out of the middle of this wire here. Get my soldering iron. That's cool. Yeah. Put this away. going to shorten this wire as much as possible. So let me grab these. I'm going to cut it right there, right there. I'm going to take a lot of it out. 
like that much. Now, I could have gone in and unsoldered that from the board and resoldered it to the board, and it would have been neater and nicer. But I don't care. It's too much work to have to rewrap this thing, you know, just to make it look good. So. I'm just gonna solder that short like that. It's gonna be fine. We'll just bend them up like this. Get some of that foam. Uh, let's see where we're at with our solder. Where did I put that? Oh. They just disappear in your desk and well. This happens to anybody else. It happens to me all the time. Stuff's right on my desk and I just don't see it. <laughs> Especially in the middle of a build where you get things everywhere. That's not quite that's not quite there yet. Need some more heat shrink. I'm sure to cut those wires. It's gonna be hard to make it put. It's gonna make it hard to put heat shrink on it. Jeez. That should be good. So we've got our hot glue hot over there. So let's take care of this camera. Put some hot glue in the back, some hot glue on the sides. And hot glue is no big deal to take off if you need to, so just feel free to go nuts with it. Get the camera right way up and just squeeze that right in there. So I'll make sure I don't get into the plug there. Ooh, that's hot. Ooh, that's hot. This is why I call it hot glue. Okay. Ow, my fingers. Ow. Oh, we got hot all up in that plug. Jesus Christ. Ugh, what a mess. What a mess I just made. Alright, I'm going to have to redo that, obviously. Used a bit too much. A bit heavy-handed with the hot glue. <laughs> I got it in the camera plug, so... Not good. Everything sticking to everything all of a sudden. Oh, what a nightmare. I should have plugged that wire in before I even glued this thing down. It would have been the smart thing to do. But now, alright, I'm going to pause this video for a second while I dig all the hot glue out of that plug. I might have to go get some alcohol and take that out, and then we'll be back in a minute. Alright, I'm back. Uh, if you didn't know, alcohol melts hot glue. So, if you need to get hot glue out of something, like you're extremely stupid, 
and you get hot glue and a plug for a camera connector, alcohol would get it out. I actually was able to dig all that stuff out with a knife and then get that camera connector in there and get that camera glued back in there. So that's in there now in the glue setting. So back to what we were doing, which I believe we're about to solder this connector back on in shorter form to that thing over there, that uh, power filter. So let's do that. Just going to tin the wires. My helping hands. There we go. Tin the wires. Tin the wires on this one. Enough. Let's get those two things, those two crazy kids lined up. go. Ground soldered. And power soldered. Oh yeah, we're solid. Get the heat shrink on there. Flame on. God damn, what's with me and burning my fingers today? There we go. There we go. Okay, that's good and on there. Now we can stick that back on there. No exposed wire showing. Good. And connect it back up yeah just like that oh yeah that's good to go much 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 better you know what we're just gonna get a zip tie a little zip tie a very small one and zip tie those wires together to relieve any strain on them from pulling on them and plug batteries in You're going to be gold. Golden. Okay, I'm going to zip tie all these together right here. And I'll show you. I know you can't see it on the camera from where you're at. I'll show you in a second just what I did. There we go. There we go. Okay, so, yeah, good. Now, as you can see, the wire is much, much shorter. I've got the zip tie there, so even if I'm pulling on this, we're not going to pull on that, and that's just going to stay right there. Okay, so we've got the wire on the other end. We've got another JST. I don't feel like I need two JSTs in this system, so I'm just going to cut that, and we're just going to solder that directly to the power wires from the VTX and from the camera. So they all reach to about you know, one thing I don't like about this is this OSD settings plug. We're going to take that out after I actually set up the camera. But all these power wires will reach yeah, will reach all the way over there. Yep. 
Yep, so we can shorten this wire significantly. Okay, I'm going to re-pull that off, re-undo this, shorten these wires way up, like that. Use the handy dandy wire strippers. And hold on to that for me. Okay, tinned up. Tinned up. So, how much length do we need on these? Not much. I'm just going to unravel all these wires here so I can see where everything goes. I've got video, audio, and a ground in here, and that ground we're just going to put to the common ground. Audio and video obviously go to the camera, and we've got another ground and a power for the VTX. And you can shorten those way up, way, way up to probably that wall. There we go. And we've got camera power. We've got two powers for the camera. Let me take this plug off. Because one of them is for the OSD to show us VBAT and one ground and one video. And ha! Huh. So this, these, the big Swift 2 has audio, but the mini Swift 2 does not. So we can go ahead and remove the audio wire from our, well, you know what, let's just put it to ground. That way we just ground it out. Just ground the audio right out. So we'll cut that the same length as this other ground. That way we're not using bandwidth for audio that we're not using. So we'll just put that right to ground. Okay. So I've got power. Blue and red are power. And ground and video from the camera. Okay, so the two powers from the camera, which these two, and the power from the VTX all go to the red power out from the power filter. I'll strip a little more off of there. Make my life easier if I just strip it a little further, huh? So let's do that now. Power, power. And power. I shortened that so much it's going to make it difficult, but that's okay. I can just move this. Power, power, and power. I know if you're watching the video, this isn't very exciting because you can't really see what I'm doing here because i got my big hands in the way. Well, I'm just wiring up the FPV system the same way you wire up the FPV system or pretty much anything. We're putting VBAT, you know, right from the power filter directly to the VTX, which can handle well up to 4 cell. So I'm going to have to strip that some other way. And the camera, which can also handle well up to four cell. Okay. Power, power, and power. And we're also putting in the VBAT from the camera to get the OSD to show us power. So we know how much power we have left while we're flying. So those three wires are these three right here. I'm just going to twist them together on the end. Then we'll tin them and we'll solder them. And that'll be power done. 
and ready to rock. There we go. Careful soldering around your plane. You don't want to drip solder. There we go. Okay. Let's grab some uh, heat shrink. I think probably that size. Uh, where's my power filter? Okay, now we just solder all those power wires right to the power wire on the power filter. Carefully, carefully. Just like that. And that's all there is to it. Just gonna make sure we got them all connected. Good, good, and good, good. Put the heat shrink over it. Little fire. Okay, let's get all the grounds connected. We got ground from the camera, ground from the VTX, ground from the two grounds from the VTX, and an audio from the VTX. And we're gonna connect all those to ground. If you're not using audio on that's on your VTX has an audio cable, and you're not using it, if you're not getting audio from any microphone anywhere, you want to just run that right to a common ground. Because that will just stop that VTX from outputting the audio and if you're outputting audio and you're not using it you're using bandwidth that you don't need and aren't utilizing and your VTX takes up more space on the 5.8 gigahertz spectrum or whatever spectrum you're using than you actually need so anytime you have audio and you're not using it just ground it So that's what we're going to do. We've got these three grounds from the VTX, two grounds and an audio, and a ground from the camera. And they all have to go to ground with a power filter. Get that out of the way. Unwrap these two. And we're all done all this wiring we're just gonna clean it all up we're gonna put these wires where you won't see them you'll see what I mean you'll see what I mean in a few minutes when I'm all done this wiring okay that's all three of those grounds just twist all three of those together I'm trying to shorten the wires as much as possible to get as much weight and wasted space out as I can of this build. Space is at a premium. Weight, I'm not so much concerned with the weight of these wires that I'm cutting off, but I want to get as much clutter out of here as I can. So I'm trying to shorten these wires much as possible. Okay, let's turn that. There we go. Yeah, we're all in there. Let me get some heat shrink. Okay. Beautiful. Flame on. Very good. We've got all our grounds connected. We've got all our power connected. All that's left is connect the two video wires together. So we'll put the power filter back on its Velcro. I'm going to take the video from the VTX. 
and the video from the camera. I'm going to connect those two. I'm going to cut them both about right there. Good. Trim this one. Trim this one. There we go. Tin them and solder them together. Tin this one. Good. Tin that one. Good. We need some very small heat shrink. How many? Do I have any even smaller than that? I do. Yeah, that's about the smallest size I have. There we go. I'm gonna connect those two. Okay, I don't want to connect. go. And, oh, no, that was not well connected. You always tug on your wires after you solder to make sure they're connected and those two were not. So, we'll give that a second. Yeah, now they're connected. Okay. And flame on. Alright, good. So, Here's a look at all my wiring connections. You can see all the, all the power and ground comes out of the filter here, goes to there, goes to there, and the video just connects to each other. So we're just going to take all these wires and we're going to tuck them right down here in the corner and we're just going to use a dab of hot glue to keep all these wires just running right down along the bottom of the bay there. So I still have hot glue plugged in. Tuck them all right down into the bottom of the bay, right along the edge. And just put a dab of hot glue on it. And that's going to just hold it there. There we go. Just a dab will do you. I'm just going to keep it there until it dries. It's not like securing your wings on. This is just something to keep those wires down there so you don't need a ton of glue. You just want to keep them out of the way. So you're putting your battery in and out. You're not catching these wires all the time. Just put another dab here in the corner. Nope, just a dab. There we go. It was actually a bit too much. I used to wipe some of it up. Without completely burning my fingers. There we go. And I'm just going to put one more dab right along this side. Just like that. Keep those wires out of the way. When we're putting batteries in and out. We don't want to be catching them. There we go. And that'll do it. Electronics installed. All there is. Okay. Okay, so next step is I'm going to power up. Now, we haven't put the winglets on this plane yet, and that's something we still have to do. But I'm going to power up 
and just test everything right now. Make sure the FPV system is working. Make sure my servos move. Make sure that the engine spins. And make sure that we wired everything up the way I think it, it. I think we did. So this is something you should do. If you haven't bound it to your radio yet, I know I haven't done the section on radio yet. Um, you know, you might skip forward, do the radio stuff, come back, do this, whatever. But I'm going to. Uh, I have bound it to this. I have created a model and bound it to my radio. So I'm just going to power up and make sure everything's working correctly. And then we're going to move on to the next set thing. I'm probably going to be putting the winglets on. Switch warning. Pull the plug in that hot glue. Okay. Yeah, fail safe has not been set. Yeah, I know. Okay. So we just need to grab a battery. So far, so good. Oh, I didn't plug in the FPV system again. Okay. That lights on my VTX. That's good. Servos move. Very good. Motor spins. Good. Now I'm just going to grab my uh, goggles and test this camera. Put it on the channel, I usually fly on. Okay. It's the channel I usually use. Just grab a pair of goggles here and actually you know what I have a pair right here. And I can just test. Oh yeah. And we've got We've got picture, and we've got our OSD down there at the bottom. So everything seems to be working exactly the way it should. So that's excellent. Now, I'm not going to go through setting up the camera OSD with you. I'm not going to go through any of that. I'm going to get it set up and take this off. I'm not going to go with, through setting up your channels. If you're a quad pilot, I assume you know how to do that stuff. I will go through. Starting a new model, binding it to the model, getting your servos, because right now these servos are not moving in the right direction. They're moving, but when I pull back, they should both go up, and only one goes up and one goes down. And when I do that, that should be the opposite. So I'll show you how to go ahead and correct all that. But first, we got to put the winglets on. But for right now, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, you know, I'm going to unplug this, turn my radio off. We're going to get cleaned up, but we still have to glue our winglets on with goop, and that's going to have to sit for a while after we do that, but all the electronics seem to be good. So, apparently I've done everything correctly, I'm putting hot glue into the camera didn't mess it up too much, because it works. So, all good. So for right now... We're going to stop right here. Um, when I come back, we're going to put the winglets on. All right, so I'll see you in a few minutes.